Hey everybody, I'm Todd with Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. All right, you guys, we left off in the last Unity build video, which was episode three of the neck build. This is episode four. Here's our neck. As I've told you guys, since the beginning of this thing, I'm building this guitar on the fly. I'm trying not to let myself get any preconceived ideas or anything like that. I want to truly build this guitar off the cuff, thinking of whatever it is that I want to do to this guitar and doing it and just letting that be what it is. That's what got us to this point and that's what's going to carry us through, I hope. Um, I've got something else I want to discuss with you guys, just really quickly. Gio from Tornella Guitars and myself are in the middle of an Ultimate Strat collaboration. The new video just posted a couple of days ago over on his channel, at Tornella Guitars on YouTube. If you guys don't mind, head over there and give Gio a subscribe. I'll put a link in the description to Gio's channel. I'll also flash one up here on the screen. I just wanted to remind you guys to make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell while you're over there. Thank you so much, you guys. I am so proud to belong to this community and I am so honored and humbled to be doing this series with Geo. He's a fantastic builder. Everything's coming together. We're feeling great about it and we're planning many more of these, um, these collaborations. Let's get back to work on the unity neck, you guys. I think what we should do tonight is see if we can't get these tuners drilled in and get our fret markers laid out and figure out what it is we wanna do with these fret markers. So since I've gotten down here, I've taken a measurement of my Shaler tuners and I'll go ahead and show you guys these tuners. I was reluctant to do this because I wanted it to be a surprise, but these tuners are just the coolest ever. These are Shaler Da Vinci's. I read all about these things and there's so much engineering that went into the design of these tuners. I was super impressed. Anyway, I've taken a measurement of this shaft that goes in the back of the headstock. That is about 9.8 millimeters. So a 10 millimeter drill bit's gonna work. The threaded part of the bushing here that comes in at 7.8 millimeters. That means we either need to use an eight millimeter drill bit or a 5 16 would probably work. Before we move over to the drill press and start doing all that work to get our tuners drilled in, I would just as soon go ahead and mark out our fret markers and get those drilled in while we're over there too. But we need to decide what we're gonna do. And what's coming to my mind right this minute is an over and under like I did on the Astrolabe. I really love that. I think it turned out really nice. This is a 24 fret neck and I think it would really work out really well. So what I want to do is shift these four tuners before the 12th up to my base side. We'll mark the 12th in the center and only use one fret marker. Then we'll drop these four down to the treble side of our neck and then we'll mark the 24th fret in the center as well. So I'm thinking a four millimeter is going to work for that. And since we're going with black hardware on this guitar, I think a four millimeter aluminum tube would be ideal, honestly. This is a four millimeter outside diameter three millimeter inside diameter, which makes our wall a half a millimeter thick. Let's take a measurement over from the edge of our fretboard, eight millimeters in. All right, let's make ourselves a line. Okay.
Now, all we have to do is take our fretboard template, which has a scribed center line and an open hole, an eighth inch hole in the middle of the fretboard template so you can mark um, fret markers in the standard locations if you decide to do that. So all we need to do is ride that center line down the line we just made. We'll line our fret scribes up with our fret slots that we've already cut into the neck and we can just punch these in. I'm going to take our eighth inch center punch and I'm going to go right down in these holes right here. And here's the important part, you guys. When I show you this, you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Some of you already will. But all I have to do, I know I'm centered this way now because my fret lines are lined up. But all I have to do is make sure those little dimples that I just made with the center punch are exactly on that line and we'll be in good shape. All right, we need to do the same thing on our treble side. There are marks for our frets on that side. There are our marks for our frets on the bass side. All we have to do to figure out the 12th fret marker is we can choose one of these on either side of it. Line it up on our center line. We won't need to clamp this one because it's only one. Now, we'll do the same thing on the 24th. All right, so there's our fret markers laid out. We've got our 12th fret mark now. We've got our 24th fret mark now, as you can see. And we're ready to go to the drill press with these things. This is one of those things on a guitar build that always makes me nervous, is drilling in fret markers because they're visible, they matter the slightest little bit off and you can tell it. I'm gonna get my drill press set up. I'll be right back, you guys hang tight. All right, you guys, we're back. Um, I've drilled in four of my side dot markers. I actually thought I had hit record on the camera and I was just talking, talking, talking to you guys and I realized I must have not pressed it all the way because it wasn't recording. Anyway, I went ahead and drilled four side dot markers. Here's what I've decided to do. I've got glow in the dark Lego lightsabers right here. I'm gonna use these just plain for my side dots. On the front of the neck, or for my regular fret markers, I've decided to go with a 5 millimeter aluminum tube with a 3 millimeter inner diameter, and I will use glow-in-the-dark Legos down inside that tube, and that'll give me a like a chrome and white fret dot marker that will glow in the dark. I'm going to hand drill the side dots. I trust myself way more with this drill in my hand than I do over there on that drill press. So I just want to do this by hand. There we go. All right, not completely cleaned up yet, but there we go. Let's drill these front fret markers in, take a measurement on this tube, and we'll find us a drill bit. I'm gonna do those by hand too, I think. 4.95, so a five millimeter drill bit's gonna work for this. Now we got a lot of cleanup to do, but that's fine. This is where I got to the other night. I was cutting these aluminum tube rounds to go in my fret marker locations. We're gonna continue on this and just keep cooking on this thing, you guys. I'm using black super glue for this so there's no voids on the edge of my hole there. And we're gonna clean the inside of these holes out with a drill bit. So there we go. Four over, one center, four down, one center. It creates a repeating pattern. I love that. You know, it gives the, uh, 
it gives the whole build continuity or the whole neck continuity anyway. And it's more interesting to me than just having dots run down the center. Now, if I were doing like a super classic build, there's nothing wrong with putting fret markers down the center of the neck. I like the way that looks on some, but I have become a fan of using brass or aluminum tube and filling that with some other material, even if it's only black super glue and just having like a little bullseye fret marker. All right, you guys, so what we're gonna do, I've got my eight millimeter holes drilled through the headstock already. I didn't figure you guys wanted to watch my back. I drilled with an eight millimeter drill bit because that's the size of my bushings that go through the front. What we need to do now is get this headstock thickness down to within a couple of millimeters at least of its final thickness, which I'm looking for about 15 and a half millimeter, 15 millimeter thickness on these. Then we're going to drill the 10 millimeter part through the back of the headstock to within about a quarter of an inch of going all the way through. That's going to give our tuner a nice tight fit. Some guys drill the whole thing 10 millimeters and you can do that, but it lets the tuner kind of flop around in the hole and I would rather it be a nice tight fit. So we're going to do it this way. So all I'm going to do is take my flat Iwasaki, probably the Shinto. That means subscribe to the channel. That is a super cool headstock, I think. I think we've removed enough material now that we're safe to drill those 10 millimeter holes in through the back. So let's get that done really quickly. I have got the neck in this form right now. It still needs to be shaped. I have drilled out all those aluminum tubes over and under. I left the ones at 12 and 24. I'm going to leave those with white mother of pearl inlays inside that aluminum tube but the more i thought about the glow in the dark lego lightsabers inside those aluminum tubes at least on the front of the fretboard the more i thought it looked kind of tacky and i'm not going to go that route what i'm planning on doing now i'm just going to fill the inside of those aluminum tubes with black super glue and we're gonna let that be that. I think it'll look a lot classier. It'll give me a black and white contrast on this solid black ebony fretboard. And I'm convinced at this point that's gonna look better. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes. I'll come back, we'll hit this with activator then we're going to start to shape this thing. I'm not going to fret it until after it's shaped. We don't want to start filing that or anything yet. So what we'll do instead, while that cures, is we're going to get set up for this neck shaping. I am going to move my camera over here and film this from a different angle than what I normally do. So what I want to do first is let's make some marks on this neck and all I'm going to need to do that is a 0.9 millimeter pencil and a metric ruler two millimeters below my fretboard we'll actually flip our neck up on the side to get this mark made while we're doing the draw up here That's our no-go line for now. And just to mark that so I know where I am, I'll take a piece of masking tape. And I learned this trick from Geo. All right, so there's our first mark. We do not want to go below that tape line. Let's flip this thing over and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Again, I need to be careful not to clamp down right on top of my super glue. OK, 
Okay. I'll have to turn this neck back on its side, but before we do that, I want to mark off some marks back here. So the first thing is, let's find us a center line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and measure because I'm going for a soft C shape on this one. I want everything as, you know, as symmetrical as I can get it. So I'm going to come off this center line 15 millimeters. Let's do the same thing on this side. I want to come 15 millimeters off our center line. So that's my first facet. I want to remove this and connect the top of this tape here and the outside edge of the tape on the back. Once I get these first two facets cut on each side, then it's just a matter of me taking the neck to thickness on the first and the twelfth fret and I can just connect the facets at that point. And you can leave pretty much a finished ready surface on, the, on this neck with the, uh, with the Iwasaki. They're just phenomenal. So there's my first facet. Oh yeah, you can see it right there. She's flat, she's straight, all is well. I want this neck tw about 21, 21 and a half millimeters at the first fret, 23 to 23 and a half millimeters at the 12th. I've got it down to right at 22 millimeters. Yeah, I'm at 21.82, so that's good. I don't want to go any further than that right now. Twenty three point five, so we're good. Have I said how much I love to shape a neck? I really love it. Anyway, there's my neck, you guys. For now. I still gotta sand it. Feels like a guitar neck. I love it. Alright, let's go make some coffee. That's what I need, some new coffee. All right, you guys, I'm back. I want to work on this volute for a little while. I've elongated this space right here slightly, so I want my the point of my volute to fall basically directly under my nut. And because that space is elongated, I want to trail two ends off up into these curved areas right here. I think that's going to add some strength. You're never finished sanding on a guitar build. This doesn't happen. I'm really happy with that. It's raked back. That I did that on purpose because it fits really nicely up against the uh, the fold of between your thumb and your index finger. That's a super comfortable feeling. So that's what we're looking like now. All right, you guys, I am going to hop over on the bandsaw and saw out this material that I don't need right there. Um, 
I won't move the camera over there. This should be pretty quick. We will shape a little on the neck hill and get it to the point to where I start to ramp up into my transition. We're not going to go all the way with that though. I don't want to do that until the body's ready to accept the neck. I've cut this material away from the back of my heel right here and got it to within a quarter of an inch of the three inch neck pocket bottom that I want. I'm actually planning on leaving this slightly longer than three inches, like three and an eighth. I want to make sure I get a nice solid glue in when I set this neck. Um, if I do it as a set neck, I may do it as a bolt on. I haven't decided yet. If I do it as a bolt on, I'm going to considerably thin this hill out to where it's within, you know, it'll probably be slightly over an inch thick. If I decide to do this as a set neck, which is why I have not taken this material off the back of the neck yet, um, I will leave as much thickness as I possibly can so I can flow carve. That's what I'm calling it anyway. <clears throat> so I can flow carve my neck heel and my body together to make it seamless. I love doing that on a set neck guitar. Hell, I like doing it on a bolt on guitar. Um, anyway, I'm honestly thinking about waiting to install the frets just in case we nick the fretboard or something like that because if you go ahead and install frets and you wind up nicking the fretboard, it takes five times as long to get those kind of issues fixed than it would if we didn't have frets in there already. You know, I feel like I want to eventually explain to you guys in mathematical terms what it is I'm doing because I shape by feel a lot, you know. And even though I knew I was going for a modern C profile on this neck, how I get there is with this, not with a, a numbers or anything. And I need to really do a video eventually that breaks that down mathematically so I can give you guys the measurements for what it is I'm doing. I think that would be more helpful than just showing you guys how I shape a neck freeform style. There we go. As you can see, I left plenty of thickness right here to be able to shape that once we get it ready to go in the body. We're going to leave it right here. I'm going to wrap this video up. But before we do that, I want you guys to check this out. So this is the neck for the Unity build. All I've really got left to do to this thing is put frets in it and sort out my heel. I'll sand it up to 320, maybe 400, according on what kind of finish I end up going with on this guitar. I've got my volute carved in. It turned out really sweet. This is a super comfortable neck. I'm calling this a soft C carve on this guitar. We got our heel carved in for the most part, and obviously I'm doing a tapered carve on this thing. I will flow carve this up into the body once we get that done. I'll let you guys see this body blank before we wrap this video up. This is a nine piece body blank. This is Limba on the outside. This is actually black Limba. Even though there's no black variegation striping in this, it still comes from the lower part of the tree, which from my understanding is what black Limba is. If you go higher up in the tree, it becomes white Limba or Carina, as some people call it. But this did come from the lower section of the tree. I got this wood on Cook Woods, and that's where I learned about that. Um, these center two pieces are a Mazaku. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's supposedly world-renowned instrument wood. And then I've got a strip of Red Heart run down the middle. I've got bird's eye maple veneer separating the Red Heart from the two outside pieces of this Amaza Q. And then I've got fumed eucalyptus veneer between the Amaza Q and the limo on the outside, making this a nine piece body blank. Um, I am putting a top on this guitar. 
We'll look at this top before we wrap this up too, because we're going to be dealing with this in the next video. One of the first things I want to do before we get rolling on this body is to joint and glue up that top to make sure it's ready when we get our body blank prepped. So let me grab that top. I want you guys to check this top out one more time. I am blown away. I really want you guys to be able to see this flame, but look at the ripple in that. This is absolutely 5A curl. As I said in an earlier video, I got this top right here for 40 bucks because of these two burl pins, which is what made me buy it in the first place. I like the odd, you know? I like the oddball stuff, you guys. I don't mind knots. I really don't like insect tunneling or anything like that. That's hard to deal with. It doesn't look natural. But when it comes to knots or mineral streaking or anything like that, bicolor, I love that. I think as long as it looks natural to me, anything like that just adds to how unique that board looks. You guys know how I am. I like to take what some people would see as a flaw and turn that into a feature. That's going to do it for us, you guys. Don't forget to head over to Tornelli Guitars and check out the latest in the Ultimate Strat video series. That's over on Geo's channel. I'll see you guys in the next episode for the Unity build. Until then, and as always, peace and love.